Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Entertainment. It has been a minute since I've done one of these essay type videos, but I was struck by a bolt of inspiration, so here we are. Gallivant was a... Ugh, how do I describe it? It was a two season show that aired on ABC in 2015 and 2016. Where has the time gone? And was marketed as a musical fantasy comedy extravaganza. It's one part Knight's Tale, one part Spamalot, and many, many parts Disney for people who grew up with Disney who can now appreciate a darker, more adult twist to the jokes, themes, and of course, the music. The music was composed by the man himself, Alan Menken, known for such works as The Little Mermaid, The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Beauty and the Beast. He even copies himself in the main hook for the show, which is a very simple do do re re mi mi, but don't let its simplicity fool you, it's as the show even calls out a real earworm. I'm not kidding, you'll be walking around and just going da 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 And let me know in the comments if you know what song he takes that from. Here's a couple hints. Think end of act one. French horns. I've had a thought on and off for a little while and I wanted to get it all out and organized cathartically and the thought is simply this. Could Gallivant be adapted into a stage musical? My short answer is no. Follow up question? Should it be? Also, no. But I'm gonna tell you why. I'm off on a hero's journey. So Gallivant is a television show. It's made up of six hours of story. And plenty of bigger stories have been adapted into musicals before, books, plays, movies, but very few television shows. Why? The very reason I tend to gravitate towards TV in the first place. In the kind of television I like to watch, there's not just one story. There are many stories, many characters, long-form arcs that takes episodes, seasons, years to complete. There's plot, themes, nuance, visual and aural storytelling in a much higher degree than would be found in a different medium of storytelling. I know there are more purely episodic television shows, but that's not really the norm right now, nor really for the past couple decades. Even sitcoms have multiple episodes arcs. They don't have as many very special episodes that reset at the end. They create a lived-in familiar universe. The biggest difference between a television show that over the course of many years tells a complete story and a movie which tells a complete story is each episode installment unit of the television show must also tell a complete story. If the story of season one of Gallivant is Gallivant traveling on a quest to save Madalena and Isabella's parents from King Richard, that's great, that's a story, you can work with that. But because it's a television show, every episode is a side quest of sorts. It is a hero's journey, after all. There are different steps on their journeys to becoming different characters. Every episode, therefore, is also a story. Granted, because of the nature of the show, it's not a purely self-contained story. Gallivant is more serialized than episodic on that spectrum. But there's still an episode-specific problem. There's still some kind of obstacle. One or more characters has to make a decision, and their decision informs who they are as a character, and as a result makes them a slightly different character at the end of the episode. For example, if I was cutting down the episodes to include just necessary to the main plot moments, I would completely cut out the trip to Sid's home village in season one, episode three. Plot-wise, it's just a side stop on their trip, a place to relax and regroup. Character-wise, though, it's a significant early step in knocking Gallivant down a peg. It gives him and Isabella a few chances to verbally spar, and it gives Sid a chance to shine in the limelight before he gets ignored for the rest of the season. Television can have multiple arcs for multiple characters. There might be two or three plots in a single episode, and only one may relate to the overarching story, but you don't feel cheated because you got to spend more time in this universe with characters you enjoy. And I was just thinking of season one before. Season two is slightly longer. It has one major addition to the cast while beefing up a couple minor parts from season one while also not completely putting all the main characters from season one on the back burner. This means more stories, more needs to have a coherent beginning, middle, and end times 10 without really derailing what's going on with the overall story for the season. Does that all make sense? So you know when a popular book gets adapted into a movie and the first thing everyone says is I can't believe they cut or changed that. Granted, some of those changes may have been necessary for the adaptation to a different medium and people need to learn the difference between a good cut and a bad cut. Though I guess filming unfiltered, I just finished binging and here are all my thoughts of how this is the worst thing ever is a more lucrative way to get views on a platform like this. But imagine your most pet peeved grievance of any book to movie adaptation ever and then imagine what it would be like for your favorite serialized television show. How much more is cut? 
How many characters? And for something like Gallivant that I'll get to in a little bit, how many songs? Yes, likely it would have the same spirits as the original and have the same general shape of the plot, but how many little moments would you miss? Some of the nuance might be missing, basic character traits might be dialed up just a bit too much. Maybe your absolute favorite thing from both seasons got cut or mostly ignored. Like, imagine if they had to cut out Tad Cooper. How many of us would write it? Like this video if you super believe in Tad Cooper. I super believe in you, Tad Cooper. Something like Holy Grail of Spamalot works, with translatable gags and jokes, characters made for the stage, and a coherent beginning, middle, and end. They add more songs and characters and make it a bit different from the original film, but still keeping the same spirit. Something like the Spongebob musical works because Spongebob the television show is episodic. Sure, they're the same characters with the same character traits in a familiar setting with familiar world details, but you aren't betrayed or confused that they aren't covering every single episode of every single season of Spongebob because you don't need to to tell a believable story. I feel if Gallivant would be made into a musical, it'd have to be two musicals, one for season one and one for season two. And while they would be mostly self-contained narratives, I feel like Musical 2 wouldn't make as much sense without Musical 1. This is a bit niche, but if you get the reference, it's more like the Harry Potter musical trilogy as opposed to the Hatchetfield musical trilogy. I've never seen Lover Never Dies, so I don't really know how it works as a standalone musical versus a pure sequel to Phantom. That fact alone would definitely hinder its production, marketing, and appeal. And while I could probably get away with just making season one and ending it where season one ends, because it is mostly resolved with a few dangling threads and it's a lot closer to game changer than cliffhanger on the narrative spectrum, without massive rewrites, it would probably leave the audience feeling unresolved and unsettled. If you know the show, compare the end of season 1 to season 2. Which one feels more like a true ending, despite some lingering plot threads? Season 2 has way fewer. The only other option would be to try and make both seasons into one musical, and... no. Nope. Just... no. Comedy go! Comedy go! One of the appeals of Galavant is how self-aware and fourth-wall-breaking it is. There are occasional addressing the camera moments and moments they know they're in a TV show. There are references to ABC shows, Disney movies, other fantasy properties like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, and other musicals. They talk about the musical numbers. Sometimes they hear each other singing. This is funny. To me. Anyway, I enjoy some good humor and this is definitely my type. Adapting some aspects of the fourth wall breaking humor to a stage musical could work. Some musicals thrive with audience interaction. The cast can be in the audience, pull someone up on stage, adjust the audience directly, reference that they're in a musical or singing or dancing, and sometimes the audience can even have a direct impact on what happens in the show, like in The Mystery of Edmund Drew. But thinking to my favorite moments and jokes like this in Galavant, if they were just replaced with the stage version of the joke, would they work as well? It didn't win an Emmy. Set your DVRs. There's one more episode. Will all the singing kill our Nielsen ratings? The recap and see you next time songs in season one. The recap song in season two. Reveals that can only be done through camera work. Quick asides with characters. Background jokes like the sign pointing to Winterfell. Some of it would just not work. And while many of the jokes could easily stay and are funny given the right delivery, some of the overall flavor of the humor of Gallivant, one of its defining features, would be lost. In the, the medium of the story controls not just the relationship between the story and the audience, but its actual presentation. For a musical, I'm talking about scenes, scene changes, and related logistics. In a TV show, you can flip to different sets. Heck, they might be the same sets from last week, just dressed up differently. You can be in many different rooms in two different castles, random villages and wizard homes, pirate ships, taverns, and the forest of coincidence. There are a lot of sets, and practical, green screen, or both, they are elaborate and believable, taking you into this fantasy world. On stage, sets can be varied. Some are minimalistic. Some may have large moving parts and set pieces, or something like the iconic spinning stage in Les Mis that's been adapted into other more recent musicals. Some are just backdrops and a few basic props dragged on stage by actors. And because switching a scene means you have to put the audience in the dark, listening to scene change music in two measures are played over and over and over and over. 
over and over and over and over. I miss being in a pit. You try not to have too many of them. Imagine an episode of Galvant, or any TV show. With multiple plots, you're probably switching between two locations at least more than once in the span of one act or between commercial breaks. By the time the episode is over, if you count every location switch to different characters, there's at least 10? And keep in mind while the characters and the overall setting may be the same, for example, like the castle in Valencia, these characters may be in the throne room, the kitchen, and a bedroom in the span of a single episode. Then imagine each of those as a scene change in a musical for telling one-eighth of the story. This goes back to the storytelling problem. You'd have to find a way to spend extended time in one location before moving back to a different one. And that will affect how you plot the overall story. We're not even worrying about losing the fourth wall breaking jokes at this point. There's something called dramatic irony where the audience knows something a character doesn't. And while this can absolutely happen in a musical, I can think of a few instances in Galavant where it would have to be very cleverly done in order to not look like an exposition dump in lieu of a flashback, because again, a flashback would be an upstairs change. Or, as another example, think of the cell phone reception misunderstanding in season two. It just wouldn't work on stage after a certain point, and that's a bit of a plot starting misunderstanding that needs to happen. There's so many characters in Gallivant who are not only named and have lines in songs, but also have their own songs. On top of that, there are the episode guest stars like Weird Al or Ricky Gervais who may have their own number or two. And on top of that are all the extras who fill up the world and the chorus and the dancing and may have their own little solos think of the very opening number. You are looking at one crowded stage. Honestly, if I were adapting, I'd get rid of all the extras, which means you definitely need to rethink the resolution of the climax of season two. And are you starting to see the problems? The easiest part to translate would honestly be the costumes. Isabella has the same dress and hair for a season and a half. That is easier costuming with some musical protagonists. All right, two more if I was actually adapting ideas that I had. I would slightly change the role of the jester and make him a very clear narrator, a bit like the narrator in Into the Woods, though if he'd still also be the jester is a question for another day. Also, the horses don't play a huge part, so you could probably get away with some coconut clop clopping as a nice reference to another similar musical that actually isn't in the television show. Okay, I'm done. Everybody say! This is a musical, so of course I need to talk about the music. There are about two hours of music on the soundtrack for both seasons, which is about the length of one musical, so you can already see the problems here. Songs will inevitably need to be cut, which is a shame because I like about 95% of the songs. There's also going to be the need to write new music, change existing music, and tweak the lyrics to fit any plot alterations. Most of the songs are less than two minutes long. Verse, refrain, verse, refrain, key change, refrain, repeat. Some are very short. That's perfect for a 22 minute episode of a TV show, less so for a full length musical. Without knowing what the changes to the plot would be, I can't really offer much of an opinion as to how that would affect the current songs. I think the earworm leitmotif do do re re mi mi would absolutely stay. Leitmotifs are the lifeblood of musicals, are you kidding me? But I wouldn't even call that the Gallivant the character leitmotif. It's more like a leitmotif for the show as a whole, references to the main plot. It's like the bee motif in Into the Woods, the chromatic run in Fan of the Opera, or the soul do leap in Les Mis. So other light motifs would need to be invented. Musicals have familiar common categories of songs, and some of the songs in Gallivant will fall into these categories. There's the opening and closing of the acts, an I want song, a villain song, a love duet, a song that shows up for a character in act one with a probably sad reprise in act two, an 11th hour song, a group song, a dance number, a song where all these characters are Saying different lines and then they all come together into one, etc. Musical moments come in in key points of the plot where the characters' emotions are so big they have to start singing, and then when singing isn't enough, they have to start dancing. That's how musicals work! Some musicals are more through composed, like an opera, where others may have dialogue scenes alternating with the music. It's hard to say what kind of musical Gallivant would be in this regard. On the one hand, the music is gold. Comedy gold, you might say. On the other hand, a lot of the jokes and dialogue really help. The songs aren't very 
plotty. They're more character embellishment, especially in season two. The songs of season one, while some may lean heavily on familiar musical cliches, has more of a unique voice overall than season two. I'm not complaining though, since several season two songs are unashamedly direct parodies of popular musical and Disney songs. I think it's safe to say the music would not be a direct translation from screen to stage. And that would take away some of the charm, spirit, and humor of the original. That just wouldn't be the same. Though I'm sure if it was Mr. Mencken at the helm for the reworking and composing, it'll be just fine. Listen to the Hunchback musical, you'll hear what I mean. Alright, I need to get on my soapbox for a minute. No matter what, if this was a real musical, I would advocate for a full orchestra. I am a volunteer, amateur, hobbying pit player. I'm an oboe English horn player. And I've noticed that it's not just the players who are becoming an endangered species, it's the parts and the scores for newer musicals that are becoming a bit less common as well. And I know a lot of it comes down to money and it's a lot easier to pay one person to play 10 instruments mediocrely as opposed to pay four people to play their instruments amazingly. And it's just very frustrating. Listen to the soundtrack, there's oboe in the orchestration, it deserves to be in the future hypothetical musical score. And I'll get off my soapbox now. And now we're almost done. Galavant, as enjoyable as it is in its television iteration, would just not work easily as a stage adaptation. The narrative would have to be reworked, likely at the expense of characters. This would accommodate for limiting scene changes, the need for two acts, as well as the need to have a complete beginning, middle, and end over the course of two and a half hours of a musical pulled from many hours of mini-story source material. There would likely have to be two musicals as well. Some of the humor would not translate well onto stage, as it was made specifically for the screen. The musical numbers work well as additions to short television episodes, but not necessarily a full musical. I think Gallivant is one of those examples of a story made for a specific medium that should not be transferred to another medium because of how much it would have to lose. Alright, thanks for sticking around for my organized thought ramble. I have a couple video scripts in the works, hopefully I'll be able to make soon. In the meantime, like, subscribe, etc. and let me know in the comments if you've seen Gallivant and what your thoughts on this topic are. See you next time, and remember, embrace your creative side. Tell me why do musicals always get me so worked up?